All right. Dan is here with us for the fifth year in a row. So he's been one of the most loyal hip spacers ever. <laughs> Dan, why do Thank you keep you. on returning? <laughs> <laughs> because this is one of my favorite conferences and events in general. And it's really good. Yeah. So I, I'm enjoying it. Even if I'm not a speaker, I, I, will, be, I will be here. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. And, and I mean, congratulations really for passing the call for papers each year. It's not, thank you. <laughs> it's not an easy task. So thank you very much. You'll be talking about edge computing today. So uh, you have your 45 minutes starting now. And good luck to you. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you very much. So how's everybody doing? Friday afternoon, <laughs> everybody waiting for the weekend. That's all right. Me as well. So hopefully I, I, ha I have a I have an easy topic for today. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, what we think, where we are at our uh, computing journey at the moment, and, and where the things might be going in, in the future, and why would we want to uh, consider moving in that direction, and finally try to, to provide uh, <clears throat> some challenges of, of you know, what's, what, what, uh, what, the, what, what, what we can expect on, the, on that journey, and how we can try to solve some of those issues. So, what's edge computing? It, uh, basically, you know, to know where we are going, we first need to figure out where we are today and how we got where we are today, and then uh, try to figure out what, what's coming next, ne next, right? So, cloud native computing, right? That's the buzzword for, for the last cup, couple of years. Everybody's doing containerization, microservices, uh, scaling websites, scaling, uh, scaling uh, mobile applications, uh, uh, solving IoT problems, and, and things like that, right? But even if, if, if we are living in, in that, uh, in that uh, highly distributed uh, world fr from, the, from the programming perspective, everything is still deployed in, into, into what we can call a, a, like a co core cloud and, and uh, centralized cloud infrastructure, right? So we have a, a large number of websites, a large number of, of mobile users and, and devices, but everybody's connecting to the basically same, same infrastructure uh, uh, hosted in, in, the, in, in the central cloud, right? That's not uh, where, uh, that's not, that was not always the case, right? So he, here's a little bit uh, what people figure out uh, how these big shifts in, in the in, in the computing computing were going on, right? And and you can see uh, uh, the things are going back and forth, and it's not just a fashion, but there is a lot of fashion in it. But l let's let's talk a li little bit about uh, about all this and 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 how we got got here, right? So first we have a we had a mainframe computers, so. Computing was very expensive, so there, there was like a, a, a really limited number of, of centralized computers where, where all the workloads were running and all the applications were running. That was fine. That, that, that was uh, good enough for the use cases that, that, that uh, have been sold in that era, right? Later on, uh, with the development of, of the networks and, and, uh, and personal, personal computers uh, in, in particular, Client-server era started, so now we have a, like a distributed uh, computing for the first time. In, in, and distributed compu computing in, in terms of that one solution, one application is not hosted on, on a single computing power, right? So it's you, you had typically fat clients, uh, you, you had some logic in, in, in the on the server side, and uh, you had uh, your database in, in on the server side. So so your workloads and and uh, were. Uh, workload. So your application w uh, was distributed be between the, the clients and the servers, right? Cloud computing is, is what we're experiencing now, right? So as I said, it doesn't look centralized if you're a software developer at all, right? Because everybody's trying to build a lot of microservices and, and, connect, them, and connect them together. But if you take a look at the, the clients, and, 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 and where the workloads are, everything is, so there's a, a lot of clients connecting to the workloads uh, that are hosted in the, in, in the core cloud. So the next, uh, the next age, the, the next shift in the computing uh, is uh, edge computing, where, where we all, all try to, to again distribute, distribute uh, our workloads. And even if this uh, seems like, uh, that all these big shifts that, that were coming in, 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 the, in, in this process 
were unnecessary. It's not. So with, with every of these shifts, uh, the scale of, of, the, uh, of the solutions that we build uh, went dramatically, 10 times, 100 times, th thousands of times, right? So we had a, like a very limited number of, of mainframes. Then, then we had uh, like a small system within every uh, enterprise doing their own client server thing. N now we have like a website that, that serves millions of people and, and, and uh, <coughs> millions of, of, applica uh, of uh, mobile applications. And uh, so you can see that with every shift, there were uh, some of the uh, triggers that, that enabled that shift in, in, the, in the technology and opened up a lot of new use cases that, 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 could, that could have an, uh, couldn't be sold uh, uh, earlier, right? So what's Edge, right? So we started to uh, talking a little bit about, about this in, in, every, in different working groups that, that I'm involved in. And, and the problem is that, yeah, edge uh, basically means different thing to, to, to different people, to everybody. So depending on, on, the, uh, on your background and, and fr on, from the field you're coming fro from. But if you put it in a, like a single sentence that, that, that you want to try to explain to people, you know, what, what edge computing is and, and what, what edge particular is, that's, uh, yeah, everything that's not running in the, in, in the core cloud can be uh, can be considered as an edge site or or uh, edge right and uh, why why would we want to do that right so that's the other obvious question and the answer to that question is is that we we will try to to bring compute resources as close to the to the source to the users of of, of those of those resources as as possible right so those th th that can be uh, humans clicking on their phones they, they, that could be devices that could be aut autonomous cars whatever uh, whatever is uh, pr producing the data and, or consuming those, those data or need to be controlled by the by the systems so we are we're trying to bring the compute resources as close as possible physically to th to those uh, to those sources and as I said, uh, what are the, some of the triggers that that that, that push it, push us in, in this direction? Uh, I, I think what, what what we can say is that like uh, the systems now are producing much more data than than we were expect that we were used to, and and that we are uh, solving with with the pure cloud native uh, technologies. So so we have much much more data, and and that. Uh, uh, provides a couple of problems. We don't have enough bandwidth to get the data to the cloud. We need much uh, faster pr processing of, of those data. And in the end, we have, uh, we, we, we have much more uh, compute resources available to us. So how we are, we are going to deploy them in order to, to get a better applications and, and better, uh, better, uh, better use of, of those resources is, is a big question. So IoT can be seen as one of the, the main triggers for the, uh, for the, for the edge, co edge computing uh, as well, right? We'll, we'll you know, cover all, all these topics in a, in a, in a little bit more detail as, as we go forward, but these are like what, what can be seen as, 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 a, as, a, as a key triggers for, for edge computing. So you, if, if you can imagine, uh, we are not now dealing with with people scrolling the, the Facebook pages and and, and putting posts, uh, putting uh, you know posts and, and pictures. Uh, I read somewhere uh, uh, information that like uh, autonomous car, one car is is producing uh, I think uh, yeah tens of gigabytes of of of, of data per second. There's a, there's no uh, bandwidth and and there's no there's no real uh, r real chance to get all this data. From the car to one central cloud and get it back in, in, into in, in the in the yeah available time to 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 actually make a, a rational decision about the data we're, we're trying to deal with right so with the triggers in order to make a shift we need a triggers we, we need to identify the use cases we want to solve next and, and we also need need to to uh, uh, figure out what what are the, the enabling technologies that, that can can get us where we are in my opinion cloud native computing is one of the main uh, enabler and you know even if if everybody uh, is not convinced that you know going to, to the microservices way and and containerize everything and distributing your applications in a lot of independent small small 
uh, small services make sense. It might not make sense for smaller applications, but trying to, to, to solve all, all these problems actually makes sense. So now we have a lot of uh, tools that we didn't have five, ten, ten years ago. So everybody's to is talking about, yeah, uh, Dockers and Kubernetes and using CICD platforms to, to actually develop, deploy, and, and, and organize these services in a, in, a, in a really, really large, scalable way. And this, this can all, 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 without having this at the moment, without, uh, without ha having this technology to be able to use today in, in, the, in the core cloud and only in the, in the cloud native uh, environment, we wouldn't be able to, to try to tackle the, the edge computing use cases. Uh, 5G o o is a big promise as well. So it, it will, uh, in theory, help us to, to uh, solve some of the bandwidth problems, uh, but not all. And and I uh, and uh, in, in the similar in, in the similar fashion, even if we have a, a much better bandwidth than we have today, there will be need to put the, the compute and to put the services closer to the to the data uh, as well. But uh, in in my opinion, uh, the five G would not solve all the all the bandwidth problems, but will open a new new use cases that probably we are not even even aware of exist today. Uh, this morning there was a session in, in this room as well about m machine learning and uh, and uh, uh, it, there was a uh, there was a mentioning of, of of couple of use cases of actually running running those trained models on the on, on the edge sites which which makes sense so so that's one of uh, one of the, the key enabler moving the applications from from the t traditional traditional model to more like like uh, 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 trained model. Tra trained machine models uh, and execu executing those models and, and making decisions locally uh, as as uh, as much as we can, right? So, as I said at, at the beginning, uh, once you put this thing into this pers perspective and try to talk talk with people and, and start to think like you know what's edge for for different kind of people, you you get uh, a millions of answers, right? And um, this is why I like, I like diagram, uh, th this uh, particular diagram that uh, we came up after a little bit of, of, of talking and, and, and researching, trying to, to cat categorize all, all the other, uh, other things. And, and as you can see, we can, we can define multiple type, types of edges, and I think all of these use cases uh, make total sense. So starting from the right, it, it's, our, it's where we are today. That's AWS. That's Azure. That's Google Cloud. That's OpenShift. That's all, all the all the cloud pr providers coming out, right? All those cloud providers also have have regional data centers, so they can the hybrid cloud becomes a a, a, a thing, a, a, a much more closer thing that 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 edge, than edge computing, and that's all fine. And then we 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 coming outside of the clouds and and entering the edge space. So the first. Uh, folks that are very interested in the edge computing are all the, the service providers that, that we have today. Telcos, ISPs, uh, CDN, CDN networks. Uh, nobody wants to be, uh, no one of them wa wants to be a dump pipe for, for, for cloud providers, cloud software providers. So why would C CDN network uh, only host our, our uh, pictures and, and videos. Why, why they, they couldn't host some of the some of the workloads and some of the services and, and, and host actual applications application for us? It it, it uh, also makes sense for telcos and and ISPs because these guys all already have a lot of uh, uh, widespread geographical presence everywhere. So those are called point of presence uh, POP sites. All over the all, all over the countries and cities and uh, and and, uh, and regions and, and even na neighborhood, so in theory those those sites could be used to host s some of the some of the applications of the future, right? Uh, and then uh, uh, and when you take a look at these these kind of scenarios, we will talk a little bit about computer resources resources uh, soon, but. One, what's common with, with this kind of application, uh, with, with this kind of infrastructure, is that these guys usually don't have problems with with network, right? So it's all reliable, high capacity networks, which is which is one of of important things to know uh, to to note now. We, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Then we have a last mile 
So once you, you, you get out of your infrastructure, guys, there's a, a office, office uh, enterprise offices, retail, retail places, like every supermarket uh, want, want to have some computing power there. That's not new. We try to do, we're, we're trying to do that for, for a long time, right? And uh, the only difference uh, between uh, that, uh, that type of, of edge sites uh, is that the network here is uh, is a, a little bit more challenging. So you're you're relying on, on your typical end user network, right? It, it can be reliable or or, or unreliable, unreliable. It can be symmetrical or asymmetrical, uh, depending on the upload and download speeds. But also, if, if you take a look uh, uh, at the use case of, of a traditional IoT use case, like uh, having oil refineries and oil sites and, and all these kind of really remote locations, that network can be really, really even uh, bandwidth can be really uh, re really expensive and, and really uh, uh, really re really small, right? So that's that's another thing that, that you you need to uh, account for in these use cases. Then uh, that's only f o o that that's only categorizing the edge from from the you know pro provider and if, if, and and end user. Uh, kind of point of view, right? Then you, you you see that we have even in those categories we we have different type type of uh, type of uh, things we can do, right? So for for a big telco provider, it it couldn't be a problem to to provide a, 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 a like a mini data center and, and with, the, with a, like a full infrastructure that that you would expect from the from the, from the core cloud provider. And then as as much as you go to the smaller point of present sites and even the the retail inf infrastructure uh, and office edge uh, scenarios, you have less and less uh, computing power available uh, available to you, right? So that's a, a, a basic story about you know what, what edge computing is. So yeah, let's try to figure out you know what kind of, of use cases, what, what kind of applications we're we're trying to, to to solve with this. And and there are a couple of things uh, we identified so far that are really uh, really make sense uh, when, when when it comes to to edge computing. So first thing we, we were talking about is uh, that in most of these cases. The, the the systems on, on on the edge are producing large number of data, and 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 are sensitive to the latency to of of uh, result of processing those, those data, and and it's unfeasible to to send all this to the central cloud and 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 get get the get the the the, the application there, so that that's one big big uh, big uh, category of use cases. Other is is uh, trying to provide reliability and high availability of, of edge sites. So some of these, the, uh, uh, as we said, in, in some of the ca of the cases, uh, the network could be uh, expensive and are unreliable. But uh, we need to provide that that site is uh, is uh, functioning properly, even in in cases when there's no network connectivity to, to the central cloud and, and to the services. Uh, running in, in, into the in, into the central cloud, right? And the other, the, the third thing I would uh, generally uh, generally is, is a data protection and data pre-processing. So one thing is that uh, 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 in some use cases, uh, because of the the local policies of of uh, uh, sometimes the data even can't be used and, and can't be sent uh, uh, over over from from the from the site where they are generated uh, think about uh, G gdrp in europe uh, also i, I heard uh, recently that in china there's a law that that the gps da data uh, can uh, can't leave the region can't leave the leave the country so those data uh, uh, needs to be stored and handled locally uh, on on the site right uh, but also uh, what what we have a lot in in the IoT use cases as well. There's a there's a large uh, uh, heterogeneous amount of of devices and and systems producing those data, right? And you know what we usually like to call there's there's a device zoo out there, and usually the the job of this uh, first level of 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 processing of the data is is to to normalize and and pre-process this data for 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 a further further. 
processing. So trying to 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 handle with, with different protocols, different data formats, uh, uh, f uh, do some basic analytics to 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 filter out the the noise from the from the actual information. Add some met metadata to to, uh, to to everything like uh, location and identity of of of, of the systems that, that are pr producing the data. So those are the 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 the, f the three main problems that ed edge computing is is basically uh, trying to solve, right? And like with with everything with with technology, you know, there's no silver bullets and 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 magic nowhere. So there's always trade-offs, right? And I think th this diagram is something uh, that, 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 that we are trying to spread around and, 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 and talk to people ab about, you know, why and, and when you, you should try to, uh, to consider edge computing. So if you go to the, to, to the you know, core cloud, cloud, uh, core cloud technologies, you get uh, a, a, a better economies of the scale. That, that's where we are today. So with a very, very little of, of, of computing overhead, we can manage large number of flow workloads and, and, and everything can be shared uh, bet between the, the same uh, computing infrastructure, infrastructure right? Uh, and the res uh, and you know our wor workloads are, are sharing the, the resources and, and the cost of computing is is going down but if if we go more we go to the edge uh, we are we are tackling this problem of of uh, doesn't have to deal with with the band bandwidth we have a better latency we, we have a better resiliency availability of our systems and our our data are better protected in terms that we don't send data outside of of the of the well, realistically, uh, uh, area where they are pr produced from, right? But we get uh, a much, much, uh, 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 much more expensive computing, right? So it's not easy to, to, to put uh, those resources uh, on, on the edge side. So, so we we lose the economies of, of the scales of, of of the cloud computing. So, the general mantra we come about is centralize when you can and distribute when you when you must at at at, at the moment right so taking all all this in, in, into account there, there's a couple of of applications that that are people are always mentioning about identify based on the on the on the problems we can set, solve with the with the uh, edge computing is what, what are the the emission like a you know killer applications f for this and it's usually uh, when you say like smart infrastructure, meaning that like your your smart vehicle can't make all all the deci decisions itself, if, even if those new vehicles are really small data centers, uh, but and they also can't be connected to one ce central centralized uh, centralized uh, uh, cloud, right? So people are, are trying to figure out how they can make uh, roads smart smarter, right? So so put the the computing uh, computing uh, uh, resources closer to, to, to the cars themselves so that they can uh, synchronize and coordinate and, and try to tackle these kind of problems because one vehicle on its own can't make all the deci de decisions. You, you need to have them networked and they need to, to figure out together how to, to behave on the road. So th that's just one of the, the, the applications. Large scale IoT and, and industrial IoT is another use case. So, you know, all these years we're we are talking about, uh, you know, the prices of, of sensors and actuators and all, all the devices going down, people trying to build this, the systems with, with a very, very large number of de devices, millions of devices, and, uh, and you know, even, even getting, getting even crazier than that, than that. It's really, really not practical to try to, to connect all these, these devices to, to a, a, a centralized data center and try to, to get all the data from, from those uh, from 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 those devices uh, centrally, right? I mean, there today exists uh, these kind of systems. I mean, it, it's nothing new. So IoT gateways try to do some some of these things. Uh, this trend is only going into the into the, the direction that you know these gateways will, will go from from small systems to to a, a system that, that can really run our our or a subset of our our our. Cloud, uh, cloud infrastructure and can be handled in, in a similar way. 
Gaming industry is, is one of the, the great uh, examples of, of latency as well, because milliseconds there literally means life and death, right? <laughs> in, in that world. So, you know, for example, telco providers are, are, are thinking about how, how, how they can uh, put the gaming servers on your street, on, 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 the, on, on the boxes that they already have there, so, so that, you know, you can have a, a quite a different latency requirements and, and different experience playing, playing in, in, a lot, in, in a local environment than, than uh, you can do today. And as I said, like uh, on, the, on the session we saw this morning, you, you could see actually any, uh, a couple of, uh, couple of re re real use cases run running today in, in, in the space of uh, AI and ML, uh, ML uh, 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 spaces. Uh, Again, uh, virtual reality, artificial reality could be an inter interest, interesting use case. Uh, think about uh, that use case in the terms that your device that, that are producing and consuming that data is not powerful enough to produce, uh, to, 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 uh, to handle all the, all the data. So that's something that, that people user usually refer to as a compute offload. So instead of pushing that data again to the cloud, it could be pushed to, to, to a local lo local environment to be produced and and uh, and uh, consume the, the results of those of, of that uh, computing. So, finally, uh, uh, in this uh, final part, I would like to talk a little bit about how we can how we can do it. Uh, so it, it's a really really uh, new domain. So, so today, what, what I, I will try to do is, is uh, uh, provide some questions and define the challenges and, and provide uh, uh, a basic theory of the solutions of, of what we can do. And some of these things are, are already in the, in the works. So hopefully next time we will meet, we, 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 we would be able to go into the details about at least uh, solving some, some of these challenges. So, as I said, in my opinion, the, the, the cloud-native uh, uh, computing is providing uh, a, a lot of benefits to, to try to solve all these uh, all these uh, challenges, and I, I'm uh, I'm personally involved in, into into solving some of these things uh, uh, with the Kubernetes, and there are two two things for that. So 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 uh, Kubernetes architecture and and generally cloud platform architectures are good. There's no need to, to reinvent it from the scratch. So the, the, the basic idea of having the, the control plane uh, consisting of multiple master nodes and, and then the worker nodes that, that actually, actually uh, execute our, our logic is sound and well. We, we have a, a scheduler for those workloads. We have an API server that, 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 uh, that actually informs the, the, the nodes to, to start uh, start executing uh, some of these workloads. So, I I I don't see uh, uh, why we we would need to 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 re redo everything. Some of these things, as as we will talk a little bit more ab about, will need to be uh, redesigned because some of these components today in Kubernetes are are written uh, with the with the perception of the infinite infinite uh, uh, scale out and and uh, local local network between the between the components so so that's that's the problem but but the general architecture is is good and the other thing is is that uh, uh, the kubernetes and cloud native computing uh, is where the developers are today so the tools a lot of tools already exist and and we already uh, you know are doing what we can to, to develop uh, develop our applications in, in in a certain way, and 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 again, there's uh, there's no better way to, to do these uh, things. Uh, so why not reuse the existing APIs and uh, existing toolings to try to develop all these services? And all, the only thing that edge computing is really really changing is is where these services will, will run and how it, it will communicate with. Uh, between themselves, but the development of the services is generally, uh, generally, and the infrastructure is already here. So, what what are the what are the you know general categorization of of uh, of, of the challenges we have for for the edge computing? Right, I would like to put uh, 
three big uh, categories of, of challenges to actually execute edge computing. First is the infrastructure. And that is how we're going to put uh, our uh, compute resources at the edge, right? So how do we actually create our small clusters or, or nodes, uh, nodes outside of the central clusters and how we, we create the infrastructure where, where, the, where everything will work, right? Other is uh, the control plane. Uh, and that, that's, the, that's the job of, of the uh, uh, a cloud uh, control plane, right? But some things changes, right? So, so now we maybe have uh, nodes that, that are running over the, the, the bad network or, or we have much more uh, 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 hardware constraints there. So, so nodes that, that can't run all the components on the, on the node itself that, that's needed for the, for the, for, for the, for the workloads to run. So we need to, to consider some of those aspects as well. And finally is, is the data plane. And, and uh, that's the problems we have when we successfully manage to, to, to put our, our, our uh, workloads on, on the edge side. So how those microservices running there communicate with the cloud and, and communicate between themselves, because that's something we, we don't do uh, enough today, at least in, in, the, in the mainstream, uh, with the mainstream technologies, right? So, what, what do we have as, as, in, as in issues for, for deploying our, our infrastructure at the edge? First is uh, we have much more uh, resource constraints. Even if you, if you, if you talk, talk about small clusters there, there's no auto scaling. You know, uh, when you operate in, 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 the, in the cloud environment, you have this notion that whenever you need more resources, you can just click, click the button and, and you will get more, more resources provisioned for you and your, your, your applications can scale out. That, that, that doesn't help, help, uh, happen on, on the edge. So somebody needs to go there, put a new, a new servers, provision everything, and, and, and add more, 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 more power to, to the edge side. And it's, it's not just the, com, com, uh, the cost of the computing resource, it's also, it's also the question of the, of the skill and, and, the, and, the, and the engineers available to do that, right? It's much easier to, uh, to, to have a, a proper engineering uh, handling your data center than, than your local uh, convenience store, right? Uh, we, I already mentioned network and that, that stays. And then we have we have problems of, of the physical security of, of the edge sites. So, something running in in the, in the central data cloud, you don't you don't need to think about if, if someone will physically tamper with the hardware, try to install uh, uh, any kind of software on it that that shouldn't be there. Starting from the operating system or all, all, all to running your running the the services that will you know mine bitcoins or or things like that. So. Edge nodes needs a, a special, config, uh, special con consideration when it comes to thinking about the, the phys physical securing these sites because those systems are, are meant to be run unattended. So, so think about uh, uh, a, a public infrastructure or even if, if it's running in, in, a, in a private premises, in, in, a, in a offices and the stores, it's much easier to, to, to temper with. So, So let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the services themselves and, and what's, uh, what's important about, about when, we, when we talk about how we're gonna, how we're gonna manage those microservices uh, and, and, and what, what we are gonna, going to do to solve some of the, the, the issues there. Because as I said, uh, there's, there's a lot of, uh, lot of services. There's no I infinite re resources going on there. So, so we need to think about a couple of things. First thing is how we're, we are going to, to uh, deploy those services at the, at, at the edge locations. So uh, GitOps is, is, is becoming uh, uh, a word of the day. And you know, we already have, have, have our own development, developer pipelines and, and uh, creating a, a could containerize workloads. Um, one thing that is different is that uh, all, those, all, all these tools that we have today uh, uh, assume some kind of the central registry 
for, for all these uh, artifacts of, of our, our builds, right? So maybe we need to, to rethink something, something around this and, and see how we can, we can deploy these, uh, these services and provide patches and updates to the sites that, that are not, that are not uh, uh, connected constantly. One of the one of the, the interesting use cases that, that that people are mentioning is like uh, imagining the the big uh, big ships, cargo ships or, or cruisers, that that are sailing for 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 days or or even weeks and and uh, don't have uh, uh, don't have any network in those days and they are only uh, they only got the network when they dock for for a couple of days at some of the ports so. Yeah, there's something to think about that, that you know, the, this is the window of where, when you actually are able to deploy new services uh, to, that, to that site or do the, the critical updates and patches and get the data from the services back, right? Uh, also, uh, different kind of workloads uh, have different priorities. So, uh, imagine running, uh, running your convenience store or, or fast foods fast food store, there's actually a, a very good uh, use case of uh, American US uh, uh, fast food chain uh, Chick-fil-A, which are doing this in, in production today. So if you're interested in, into that, Google it and find it. It's, it's, a, it's a really good story. But uh, Im imagine having a fast food store where, where you use the, the same infrastructure at, at the store to do your uh, uh, to do to do billing and to, to do to charge your customers and and and, and use the same inf infrastructure to do some analytics and and send data back back to the head headquarters. These two workloads are, are different, uh, definitely uh, having uh, different priorities and I impacting the, the business quite differently. So so you need to think about that uh, what happens when the, the system comes comes under the pressure. There needs to be some policies that, that will say that that the high priority workloads ne needs to to contain working and that that you can kick out kick out the uh, the, the 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 lower priority uh, lower priority workloads and schedule them to work in you know, off hours and 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 when there are actually actually uh, enough resources to do so. Communication is, is uh, one of the big issues and, and big challenges. And that's one of my particular uh, uh, area of interest. So imagine having, having a, a lot, of, lot of sites that, that needs to send data or you know, RPC requests between each other. How you do that securely? One, one of the main premises is that you, know, you want to be as secure as possible. So you don't want to have anybody uh, be able to dial in into your system. So all the communication need, needs to be origi originated from, from the system out, outbound, but you still need to be, uh, need, need to be able to do a du duplex communication o over do those channels. So people are, are using a lot of VPNs today. We are trying to, to, to develop what we are calling uh, virtual application networking trying to, to, to move that communication on, 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 the, on the higher level to specifically solve some of these issues uh, for the edge to edge and, and edge to cloud computing in, in a, in a, in a uh, secure way. And as we said, uh, like with the hardware, the security is always a problem. And again, we, we need to, to, to make sure that, that that we are running the, the only only the services that, that are authorized for a, for a single site single node we need to to track and monitor that there's no unauthorized unbound uh, outbound connections from that site so so to prevent all, all kind of malicious activity which is much easier to do in, in this kind of environment than in the in, in the central cloud so how we go, how how we can do it today with the with, with, with the tools we have and, and, and where we are going with this. One obvious uh, solution, uh, especially for those infrastructure edge and, 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 uh, and provider edge use cases is to have a, a, a multi-cluster, multi-cloud environment, right? So every node, every, uh, every site is, is, a, is a, a, a separate uh, cloud cluster and that's okay. And uh, the only thing, is that we, we can only do this when we have enough, enough capacity uh, to do it like this. The other thing is that we need a, a, a completely uh, 
another la layer above this to be able to provision these clusters to, 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 to solve infrastructure problems, to, to, to solve uh, control plane problems of how we're going to deploy things on, on this cluster and, and monitor what's running where uh, and why, right? Other uh, approach that people are, are often used today is to try to, to scale out the, the, the one central cluster into the nodes that, that are not really uh, really nodes of, of, of that cluster technology. So that, that's why we have a, a technology called Virtual Kubelet, which basically uh, proxies the, on the, uh, proxies on, on, the, on the server side uh, how, how the, 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 the central control plane sees the, the, the rest of the system. And, and you know, it can instruct using the, the same API server, it, it can, in, in, uh, you know, the scheduler and the APIs and, and the everything beyond the API ser server looks basically the same. So you, you can say, I, I want to run these services and, and have these deployments uh, and the scheduler will, will do that, but then the virtual cloud, uh, virtual kubelet actually, actually uh, provisions that on the resources it, it knows about. It doesn't have to be even, even, even containerized workload if, if, if that's not the case. And finally, uh, something we didn't talk a lot, lot about is trying, trying to have uh, on, on, the, on the complete left spectrum of, of that edge types, we, we have device edge, which is uh, not trying to have clusters uh, outside of the co outside of the co core cloud, but but having the, the single the single control plane and having only the cluster nodes outside of the outside of the uh, outside of the of, of, of the of the cluster, right? And and with that, we're again getting into the device edge uh, uh, IoT kind of scenarios where people want want to have what we have today as a, as an IoT gateways. They want to have. Uh, uh, those IoT gateways containerized and, and uh, all the workloads uh, be managed and provisioned li like we do it with the Kubernetes in, in, in other environments. And for that, we need to be able to, to run things on very constrained devices, uh, something th that we uh, saw this morning, Raspberry Pi, uh, up uh, until recently couldn't even, even run as, as a Kubernetes node. So, so you need to have a, a, a special uh, uh, special components running running on, on the edge, uh, and uh, being able to talk with with the with the control plane and and being able to to run at least some of those uh, some of those uh, uh, workloads there. So that's what I ha have as a story today. So I, I try to 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 bring you the, the bigger picture where we can see that 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 the industry is going and and what what's 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 going to happen in, in, the, in the next couple of years. Uh, I'm sure we'll go through the multiple hype cycles and booms and busts, like, like it happens with every new, 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 uh, new shift and, and new technology. But as you could see, I, I think even today, you, you can, you can uh, identify uh, a lot of uh, uh, valid use cases for, for, for doing this. So, uh, as I said, some of, the, some of these challenges that, that we presented today have been already discussed and, and started to be to being addressed so so hopefully uh, next time we see each other we can we can talk uh, into a bit more details about uh, all this thank you for joining yeah